let's kind of kick uh, the session straight um, off. So the first session is on zero knowledge advertising, a new era of privacy, preserving ad tech solutions. So our three speakers here today are going to be Professor Ruben Cuevas, um, Ipek Sanir, and Luke Bragg. So I'll let Luke uh, kick us off. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Luke Bragg. I'm the uh, co-founder, chief strategy officer, and the director of the Profiler Research Labs. I'm here with my colleagues, Epec and Ruben, today to talk about zero-knowledge advertising. Now, this may be a concept that's new to folks, but this is a master class, so hopefully by the end of this session, uh, you'll have understanding of uh, what we're talking about and also the research that we've done. So um, I'm going to speak just for a few minutes to give a very practical example of zero-knowledge advertising. This is actually the same one that I got my mother to understand, um, zero-knowledge advertising. And, and this is a woman, love her to death, but the first time she used a computer, she put the mouse on the screen and moved it around because that's how she thought it worked. Um, and then I'll pass over to Ruben, who uh, is a professor at the University of Madrid and uh, led the research we did on this. And he'll go through in much greater detail much more technical detail about zero-knowledge advertising. And then lastly, EPEC will talk about the challenges and the open questions, and hopefully we'll have time for, for any questions uh, as we go forward. So this is not a product pitch. It's the last thing we want to do, but there are a few things I want you to get you in a mindset uh, of an example of how you could use zero-knowledge advertising. And that involves, obviously, our product, so I'll just mention that for a second. Um, so just imagine that you have a mature profiler which is a way for you to create, manage, and control the most accurate, authentic, and valuable information about yourself and decide what brands have access to that information, what they can do with it, uh, and also how often they can contact you, how often they can communicate with you. So uh, a lot of this is based on self-discovery quizzes on a variety of categories, your travel preferences, your food preferences, um, these real uh, deep micro-preferences that uh, a brand could never find out based on your search history or your social media uh, usage. Real deep insights, but again, you always control every aspect of this. Um, so let's say you have that mature profile and you have a desire. You know, we're all coming out of COVID. We're all thinking of travel again. Travel is a very aspirational topic. And you're dreaming of a, of a, of a long holiday in Bali. Um, and now we're obviously going to talk about a zero-knowledge advertising aspect of this. So if you think about it, you're going to put together what you actually want. You want a two-week holiday in Bali. Uh, you're going to go with your partner, and you have fictional children that I'm assigning to you today. Uh, you want to go kind of at the end of the, the, the good season in September and October. And you'd like to get some personalized offers uh, for the next couple weeks before you make a decision. Also in this package, you're going to add some of the insights that have come up from your self-discovery quizzes. You're going to say, okay, well, what, what are my food and drink? Do I have any allergies that need to be taken into account based on the, uh, the food of, of Indonesia? If you have a peanut allergy, that may be an issue in Indonesia. Um, you know, you, you like spicy food, or, or just your, your preferences in general, based on all the questions you've asked about your food and wine and drink preferences. But also your travel. So in this case, um, you're doing very well in life, and you're not really price sensitive uh, for big trips. Uh, you like a slower pace of life. You like to be connected a little bit back home, but not too much. We, we all like to get away. Um, and also the activities. You know, you like snorkeling, but not scuba, scuba diving. Again, very, very specific micro-preferences that, that really wouldn't come up in any sort of tracking that's done now in terms of marketing. And all this information is going into a little package. And this package is then traveling essentially through a uh, peer network node, which all it means is your package is going to uh, another profile user who has signed up to be a node, and then to another and to another. And in that process, you're becoming more and more anonymous even to the point of your IP address has been hidden. And at the end of that process, it's going into the metaphor of the day is the black box. And this is a box that your request is going into that no light leaves from, okay? And this black box then is also populated with all the different offers, all the different packages that any company has, whether it's a travel company or a specific resort, um, or hotel, uh, not just their Bali 
uh, offers, but all their offers are going into this black box, and in that black box now is a process of matchmaking. Which of these offerings from all these different companies match my time preferences, match the fact that it's a family holiday, and also matching these micro preferences that are important for me in how I like to travel. And once that matchmaking is done, again, no information about my request is ever going to these brands. There, no light escapes on that side. That is the zero knowledge. The zero knowledge is what they have. Um, we, we, you have the power, and they have zero knowledge. And then from that, I can decide how do I want to receive these offers? How do I want to consume the matchmaking um, uh, that this has produced? Now, it could be a thousand different ways, but it could be um, a periodic email from Profila. It could be something actually on the Profila app. You can actually see the offers and, and respond to them. It could be uh, banner ads on websites that are enabled with zero knowledge advertising. Or, and I know EPEC is going to talk about this in tomorrow's session, one of the panels about the metaverse, whatever comes next. Uh, zero knowledge is actually a really interesting concept for the metaverse because I could travel around the metaverse seeing the things that are interesting to me, but no one's knowing what I want and what I have. Um, so there's zero knowledge in that respect. Now, if you think about it for a second, this is, again, a very simple example where I've gotten what I want, offers for something that I want, where, but think about what hasn't happened. I haven't had to spend time searching, which means all those websites that I've been searching has not been tracking me. They've not been collecting and correlating data on me. They're not selling that data to someone else, which means I'm not going to start getting offers for Bali holidays after I've gone. I think we've all had the experience of buying something online, then you start getting advertising for it. It's because marketing now, in many ways, is dumb. It's ineffective, it's inefficient, and I think as we move to a new paradigm, we're going to understand how dumb marketing is now uh, in, in comparison. Um, so in this example, my private information, who I am, is completely protected, and the only brand that knows who I am is the one I've decided to actually interact with. Okay, here are my five offers. Um, now I'm going to choose one of them. And now, of course, they need to know who I am because they need to charge me or they need to do the planning, whatever. But all those other brands that gave me offers have no idea who I am. And there's no way they can remarket. They can't sell that data to someone else to market to me. Uh, I am a completely anonymous in that regard. And that's really the, the promise of zero knowledge, whether it's advertising or services. Um, and it's also the, going to be the, uh, the reality. So I'm going to pass it on to Ruben, who is going to go into much more detail into how this works and how we tested for it and how this model can actually uh, work just as well as the advertising model that we have today. Ruben. Hello. Oh, now it works. OK, so I'm going to give you an overview of our solution to implement zero-knowledge advertising. I, unfortunately, don't have time to explain everything in detail. So those of you who are interested, there is a paper in which we explain everything in detail that has the same name as, as this talk today. So before going to, to our solution, let me just <coughs> give you a bit of context uh, that some of you might be familiar with of how the advertising uh, works today. So the first thing is that um, um, the uh, ad tech stakeholders needs to be profiles of us, okay, for later uh, targeting uh, each one of us. Um, and for that, what they do is they track our activity in all our digital devices, our desktop, our mobile phones, wherever uh, you, whichever site you visit, uh, which app you use. Uh, but they also can use uh, these devices to track our physical activity. Because uh, our mobile phone are, are equipped with GPS chipsets, so they can locate us and then infer which is the venue that we have visited. It's a restaurant, it's a sport facility, it is a mall. And based on that, they can also infer what we like from our physical activity. So there is a bunch of companies tracking us uh, in our digital devices, okay? and there are different techniques to match all that activity to a single identifier. That could be through cookies, the IDFA, fingerprinting, okay? And this, all this information ends up in the back end of different companies. Some of them are well-known, Facebook, Google, but some others are not so well-known. They are typically referred to as 
data management platforms. And what they are going to have is a profile similar to what uh, I just uh, put there that could be a profile uh, of myself. Okay? Some of these companies has as many as 400 different uh, um, uh, tags in each one of us. Okay, and this is what we refer as inference-based profiling because they infer our profile from our activity and how they use this information. So imagine uh, this is myself in front of a computer and there is a website, let's say cnn.com, and there is an ad space available in that uh, page. So at that moment, the page is going to contact an intermediary saying, hey, I'm selling this ad space. Um, I'm simplifying the process because typically there are several intermediaries involved, but let's, let's keep it simple. This intermediary is going to try to understand or know who I am, right? So it's going to ask these DMPs or if the advertising is being run by Facebook, Facebook is going to uh, gather my profile. And then um, this intermediary has on one, one side my profile, on the other side has information about what is the ad type, the size of the ad, in which venue the ad is being shown. All this information is going to be used to run an auction. Okay? So several advertisers will have this information. And for instance, if I'm looking for a male of 40 interested in a sport, ah, this guy fits my interest or fits my audience. Right? So I'm going to place a bid for this ad space. So the auction process uh, is run, and there will be a winner, one advertiser win uh, uh, this auction process, and it will deliver the ad to that ad space. Okay? This is how it works today. It has two main problems. One that is very well known, and it's why we design our zero knowledge advertising system, is privacy. Okay? We are exposed without even knowing it. Um, many of, or most of the, the, the citizens, they don't know their exposition to this ecosystem. But there is a second problem, that is this inference-based profiling that is not so well known. So these inference uh, algorithms are not so good. So the profiles uh, these, uh, um, these companies built off on, on us are not very accurate. Okay? And this is also a problem because when they target us, they typically don't target us for the things we like. Okay? So this is the context, how it works today. So let's go to our solution. The first step in our solution is a registration process. So if you want to use our system, uh, you need to register. And why is that? Because we want to have uh, a one-to-one um, uh, link between users in our system and real persons. Right? This is important for brands, and this solves some problems in the online advertising ecosystem, like uh, the uh, advertising fraud. So how we do that? There is a registration server in which the user needs to provide a proof of identity. There are different ways of doing this. In Airbnb, you already can do that by uh, scanning your actual passport, taking a picture. There is other solutions like digital identity certificates or even some uh, solutions that are more novel, like the, the distributed uh, IDs, like probably you are familiar with uh, Atala Prism. Okay? There are different ways in which you can um, uh, show a proof of identity. One, the user shows a proof of identity. I'm a real person. We create for the user an avatar. This is the representative of the user in our system. Okay? The avatar is going to be uh, um, uh, provided a certificate with a public-private key. That is what is going to uh, identify the avatar in the system. Okay? What else we do? We uh, sign a smart contract between the user and the company running the system. And in the smart contract, we have all the terms of use of the system, the condition where we want to put there. And finally, these three elements, the proof of identity, the avatar certificate and the smart contract, these two pieces are mixed somehow. Okay, this is an open issue still to be solved, and uh, we store this information in a blockchain. Uh, so this registration process offers several advantages. The first one is one person, one identity. Okay, so here it's not like Twitter that you can create thousands of accounts, you know, and create bots uh, or this type of practices. Uh, this helps avoid uh, fraud. Um, we offer the user anonymity because the avatar is not going to have linked any type of uh, personal information, so no emails, uh, no addresses, uh, so it's an anonymous uh, um, identity. Uh, and finally, um, 
something that we want to offer is the possibility of trace back someone who is misbehaving in our system to the real person behind it. Okay? There is a smart, con a smart contract where you have in which conditions we could do this uh, process of coming from an avatar that is misbehaving, get back uh, to its real identity. So legal action could be taken against this person uh, or any other action like ban it from the system and not let him uh, get back into the system. Okay, that's the first step, registration. Second step is we uh, want to run away from the infer-based profiling because it's not accurate. So we, our bet is the self-reported profiling. That's it, the user can use the uh, mobile app or the web app of our system and self-declare what he wants or she wants to be in the profile, okay? So it will use the mobile app and decide I want to declare I'm male or I'm a female, uh, this is my age, or I don't want to give my age, these are my interests, I want to receive ads of these different categories. Okay, so it's the user, the one who de declares what he wants um, to, or what are their interests. This uh, system uh, or this information is going to be sitting in a server uh, in the cloud, in a repository that is going to be encrypted and it's going to be password protected. Only the user can access that information, no one else. Okay? Um, so we have a, a privacy or security guarantees for the user. And since this is sitting in the cloud, it can be updated across multiple devices. So if the user decides to use our system from multiple devices, this profile is going, to, is going to be always updated. So if at some point I decide that I don't want uh, anyone to know my age, I remove that from my profile, automatically it's going to be removed in every uh, device from which I use uh, the system. Okay, so the two first step, registration process, self-declare um, uh, profiling, and then let's go to the actual uh, definition of the ad delivery system. So which are the players that are going to be involved. The first one is the publisher, so the mobile apps, websites where uh, ad spaces are available. This is a player that is already there, so we are not inventing nothing new. Okay? The ad delivery software, this is uh, probably the key piece in our system, but this again, not something strange to the actual ecosystem, because in the actual ecosystem, for instance, in mobile apps, there is uh, 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 pieces of software in the form of SDKs that are embedded in the apps that handles the advertising uh, on behalf of the ad. So we are exactly doing the same. In the case of uh, the, the web, uh, we can implement our solution in a library to be installed into or uh, embedded into the browser, so in the form of, of an add-on. So there are different ways of doing it. So the ad delivery software, the same as the SDK do today for the, for the mobile apps, is going to be responsible to deliver the ads to the uh, publisher. The company running this service, this zero knowledge advertising ser uh, service, it's going to have its own server that is replacing the intermediaries that I mentioned before. Right? So today we have S SSPs, we have other changes. So in our system, we will have the zero knowledge advertising server. And finally, the advertiser at server that is also present in the current ecosystem. That is the server from which the uh, advertiser delivered the ads to the uh, end user device. And two repositories. The first one, the, the end user uh, storage repository, I explained it, is where uh, the information from the user will be stored. And uh, final one, the auditable transaction repository. In our system, all the transactions that happens are going to create proofs. Those proofs are going to be uh, stored in the auditable uh, transaction repository. So this makes our system auditable. And I will explain uh, later how. OK, and after all this long uh, uh, discussion, we go to the point. How we are going to implement the ad delivery process with zero knowledge guarantees. So what we do is create a protocol um, among these players. So uh, the first message of our protocol is uh, the ad list. So each advertiser is going to send to the zero knowledge uh, advertiser server a list with meta information of each ad. So if I'm an advertiser and I'm running 10 ad campaigns with 10 ads, I'm going to send the zero knowledge advertising uh, information about these 10 ads. Here, there you have 
uh, the list of parameters included in that message, what is the ad ID, uh, which is the advertiser ID, um, the IP address of the advertiser ad server serving that ad, um, it's going to say what type of ad uh, um, uh, is it, if it's a video or if it's a banner, um, what else? Ah, and very important, which is the target audience, the target profile, which type of user I'm trying to target with this uh, ad, okay? So and each advertiser in the system is going to send this info to the zero knowledge advertiser server. Okay, on the other end, when the application where our uh, ad delivery software is embedded, right, a mobile app starts or is activated, it automatically activates our ad delivery software. And the ad delivery software immediately sends an ad request to the zero knowledge advertising server. It's basically saying, hey, I want a, a pool of ads so I can show it in the app. It's basically that. And the zero knowledge advertising server is going to uh, send a list of ads in a message we call at an ad offer. So basically, if the zero knowledge advertising server have ads from tens or hundreds of different advertisers, it's going to compile a subset of all the ads available and set it to the ad delivery software. And um, in the paper, we give the details, but if you do a proper encoding you, in an ad offer uh, message, you can include information of thousands of different ads. So it's very likely that among thousands of ads, we are going to find a few of them that meet the uh, profile of the user. And here is um, where the, the selection of ads happen. So at this point, the ad delivery software has all the information it needs. It has the information about the user preferences, okay, the profile of the user, if I want to receive ads of certain time in a given uh, time of the day. Um, and on the other hand, it has a list of ads, and for each one of those ads, it has the information, for instance, which is the targeted audiences, uh, the target audience. And in addition, we can uh, account with uh, more information. For instance, we can have the historical information of the interaction of the ad, uh, of the user with ads. So, for instance, this user tends to interact with more with ads related to sport, right? So, with all this information, we can build a machine learning algorithm that is able to rank the ads that are av available from the ad offer. So, I say, okay, this is, seems to be the ad that best uh, suits the user, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, okay? So, we have sort of have a rank of personalized ads uh, that best treat, uh, treat the user. So once we have this um, rank of ads, at some point the mobile app will have an ad space available and will tell the uh, ad delivery software, hey, I have here an ad space. This is actually how it works in current online advertising uh, with SDKs in, in mobile apps. And the ad delivery software is at that moment going to pick the first ad from the ranked list, okay, extract the needed information, the ad ID, the IP address of the ad server serving it, and it's going to request the ad, okay? So the ad, uh, advertiser ad server is going to receive um, the request, find the uh, ad that is being requested, and it's going to send it to the ad delivery software that will pass it to the, uh, to the uh, mobile app. So as you have seen, we have implemented uh, targeted advertising without leaking any information to third parties. Okay, all uh, the uh, personalization part happens in the device, in the, in the ad delivery software that is embedded within the app. But uh, it's not only about not leaking information, but providing anonymity. We don't want that uh, these players can uh, try to use a single ID of a device for uh, building a kind of uh, a story of profile of the transaction of that device. So we have an initial problem here that is the IP address. So if the device is continuously uh, making connections to an advertiser that server from a single IP address, the advertiser that server can say, ah, this IP address is asking me always about ads of sport or ads about uh, clothing, right? So it can try to build this, this uh, fingerprint of that IP address. So to avoid that, we propose to use, as uh, uh, Luke said, um, a peer-to-peer -peer network, a very simple one. 
So uh, players of our system, other users, will uh, let uh, their uh, devices to be part of this peer-to-peer -peer network. What we do when we are going to send a message to the ad, uh, advertiser at server or the zero knowledge advertisers, uh, advertising server, uh, we are going to send it through this peer. Right, so uh, the IP address that are going to be seen by the destination is the IP address of the peer, not the IP address of the original device. And in each message that we send, we can change the peer that we use. So basically, each one of the messages I am sending is going to be seen um, uh, coming from a different IP address. And by doing so, this simple mechanism, we hide the IP addresses of the devices. And there is another uh, potential element that can be used as, um, as a, a single identifier. So we want that all our messages are encrypted with, uh, uh, are encrypted for security. So nobody can ever drop what is in those packets, in those messages. So for that, we are going to use um, uh, encryption. Uh, and the obvious thing is, uh, this ad delivery software is associated to, a, to an avatar, and the avatar has a public-private key, so we could use those keys to encrypt all the messages. But if we do that, these keys become immediately a single identifier. If I'm using a sing, uh, the same key always to encrypt uh, a message, um, that is an identifier. All the messages that come encrypted with this key, it's uh, an identifier of a unique user. We want to avoid that, right? And this is not a simple problem. And actually, there are here in the audience probably experts much more than us, so we ask for your help to solve this issue. We have an initial idea that is using a hierarchical deterministic keys, that is uh, a solution proposed in the context of wallet uh, IDs uh, for bitcoins, in which uh, you, for an initial uh, pair of public-private keys, you can generate an arbitrary large number of other private uh, public keys, uh, and this is what we propose to use. So for each message, we could uh, eventually use a new key for encryption of those uh, messages. Okay, But we are open to other ideas uh, for solving this issue. Okay, so we have delivered our ad, but this is a business, right? So there, are, there is money uh, behind it. So how we do the billing and accounting without revealing any identity uh, or uh, uh, from the user or revealing any data. Well, so imagine there is an event associated with the ad, so the user click uh, on the ad, so that generates a monetary transaction, right? So at that moment, uh, the ad delivery software is going to send an event message to both the zero knowledge advertising server and the advertiser ad server, saying, hey, a click happened, okay? And there is going to be information, uh, monetary information associated to it, like how much money the user, because in our solution we compensate the user for interaction with us, should receive, or what the zero knowledge advertising server as intermediary should be uh, uh, compensated uh, with. So this information is sent to the zero knowledge advertising server and the advertiser at server. Sorry, the advertiser at server is going to answer with an event acknowledgement. So I acknowledge that this event occurred, and I acknowledge all the uh, monetary transactions that should be associated to that event. And there is a final message that comes from the zero knowledge advertising server confirming the event. So at this point, we have the three players involved in the system that are going to be involved in the monetary transaction. The advertiser is going to give money to the zero knowledge advertising server and to the user, right? And the three of them acknowledge that they uh, know the event happened, and they, at the same time, are aware that the other two uh, players are also aware of the event, right? So they have all the information um, about the transaction. Um, so everything should be fine. But we want to go one step further, further and guarantee auditability. And how we implement that? So what we are going to do is make each one of these three players to create a proof of the event, a proof of the transaction, right? So this event occur, and there should be a transaction associated to it. So what we do is each one of them is going to create a message, a proof that is going to be signed with its, its private key, right? So only them in the world could have been signed this message, right? And uh, in this case, 
the ad delivery software use the private key of the avatar, right? The one that we assign in the uh, registration process. So this is going to be stored in an uh, auditable transaction repository. So this is a repository with all the proofs of all the transactions are going to be stored, right? So again, an open uh, question here is what should this uh, auditable transaction repository be? We are thinking on a blockchain, right? What type of blockchain, what type of proofs we should use here? And again, this is an open question. Should we use smart contracts for this proof? Is too much, is a smart contract? So uh, we will be happy to listen to your ideas on this. Okay, and with this, as uh, I said before, uh, in the paper there are many more details. Uh, I didn't have enough time to explain all the details, but I hope I could convene the idea of how our system works. Uh, and if you have questions, just pass by the booth. I will be happy to, to discuss with you. So a few final remarks. The first one is there are zero knowledge advertising solution out there. Probably you know Brave. Brave is a new browser um, that is available and uh, they are trying to implement a zero knowledge advertising solution. But Brave is a world garden solution because the ads needs to be shown in their browser, right? So it only works in their own venue that is their browser. The solution that we propose aims to be open. So it can be implemented in any mobile app, it can be implemented in any website, it can be implemented in any video portal system. So that's the huge difference because implementing something like this in your own venue is much simpler than trying to do it in an open ecosystem. Second point, uh, remember we go for the self-declare uh, information uh, from the user instead of inference-based because there are some works already that prove that inference-based uh, uh, profiling doesn't work so well. Another important point is that uh, in this new trend of privacy preserving or privacy friendly advertising solutions, we have the zero knowledge advertising uh, angle, but there are other startups that are trying to implement something that is called consent based advertising. The idea is that the user, uh, in this case, uh, is giving uh, the uh, control of deciding which data they want to share with which third parties, right? Based on explicit consent. So what is best, zero knowledge advertising or content-based advertising? And, and our answer is why we should choose one or the other. So I didn't time to go through it, but in the paper we explain how our system can be used to implement the consent-based advertising. So in our system, a user can decide to go for the zero knowledge advertising, so I don't want anyone to know anything about me, or the consent-based. I want some brands to know something about me, and uh, this can be implemented in our system. Uh, another important remark, the registration process, one user, one real person, one user in our system. Uh, I can uh, not go into the detail, but this is helping a lot with the ad fraud problem in online advertising. And finally, the auditability. Our system is auditable, um, and uh, this is based on the non-repudiability uh, concept. So we are creating proofs, uh, cryptographic proofs uh, that are un undeniable. So if the advertiser at some point comes and say, no, no, I don't want to pay all these clicks um, because I don't know if they existed or not, you can go to the uh, auditable transaction repository and say, but here are all the proofs, right? You sign all these proofs saying that you were uh, okay with all these clicks, so you cannot claim now that you don't want to pay them. So it's auditable. Uh, so a malicious player can behave maliciously, yes, but the proofs will be there to prove that it was uh, misbehaving at any point in time. Now I will give the floor to IPEC that will close the, uh, the talk with the challenge and open issues. Thank you, Ruben. 
Um, yes, Ruben was uh, already touching some of the challenges and open issues we have, but as a summary, uh, we would like to uh, discuss with you on this slide at the end of the presentation, because if you have any idea or recommendation or solution to our challenges and open issues, we would be really happy to hear them. Uh, the first one is registration process. Uh, Ruben was telling about, uh, about it a bit, and uh, for example, one idea of us is using a smart contract, but what kind of information we can uh, include in the smart contract is something open for us. And usage of the uh, dig digital identity management, uh, one solution can be using a physical identity, uploading it uh, after scanning, or using a decentralized solution like Atala Prism. So, we are not also uh, decided yet which one is a good fit for our problem. And uh, if we will use a blockchain, blockchain, what kind of, which blockchain is a good one fitting to our um, solution. And the second challenge we have is guaranteeing the anonymity uh, of the uh, ZK process. Uh, of course, we want to uh, encrypt the communication uh, happening in the ZK process. And one solution can be uh, using the key pairs, uh, which is attached to, to the avatar. But we find this a bit risky because if we are using it uh, like this and in the long term, it will become like the identity of the avatar. So this is something we want to skip. And another solution can be using the hierarchical uh, determinating systems. but. Uh, we are not experts on this, so we cannot forecast what kind of problems we can uh, face there. So uh, if there is any um, idea among the audience, that would be good to hear. And the third one is uh, defining the uh, ad selection algorithms. As uh, Ruben was telling, we have the, uh, the ad delivery software, and ad delivery software is receiving not the ad itself, but the list of the ads. So imagine like thousands of ads are arriving to the server. And uh, our, our challenge there is uh, matching the ad with the correct person. So imagine like a, a sports advertising from, uh, from the brand, from a brand is listed there and the same kind of ad is also listed in, uh, from brand B. So which one of these brand A or brand B advertising we should match with that person who is targeted? We have, uh, of course, some uh, ideas in mind. And for example, one that can be that um, we can check the, um, the ad interaction history of the person. So that means if he was interacting with already brand A, that means that it's better to match brand A to that person. Or another option can be uh, our solution, profiler, preferences. So if that person is already preferred to receive ads from brand B, then that would be a good match uh, for brand B and that user uh, to link. And the last one is auditing um, solution and the process. Uh, as of the auditing, of course, we need to uh, uh, record all the transaction happening in the ad system and um, for example one solution can be the blockchain or a smart contract on the blockchain or if not what kind of solution we can have can it be a database or a log system so these are also open questions uh, we haven't decided yet and uh, the process within the um, auditing process is uh, it can be either the proactively or reactively choosing. So if there's uh, like random inspection, that's, that will be the proactive solution. Or if there is, a, uh, for example, complaint towards a brand, then that will be the reactive inspection. So with this, thank you uh, for listening. And we will be happy to hear your questions and recommendations or solutions, ideas to give us. That would be great. Thank you. Maybe, would you like to come? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. That was an excellent presentation. Thank you.
Sure. sure. Uh, I can take that. We're actually working with a, a company, Luzon Prive, uh, that creates a middleware. Actually, they're, they're built for medical data storage. So it's incredibly granular in terms of permissions, incredibly robust in terms of storage. And that'll be our middleware. Um, so that's, your entire profile is there, but it's, it's even segmented and encrypted along the way. And only parts of it, when you create a buying signal, like I, in my example, only parts of your profile go up into that package, but the rest of it's stored. Um, and it'll be, it, we're working to decentralize all of this. Um, so because obviously users in certain countries need to have their data stored in their country. Um, we even would like the idea that eventually if you want to have it on your own NAS in your, in your home, you can do it that way. Uh, we're not trying to centralize that at all. Thank you. Question. Oh. So I think, I think at the end of the day, it's a business, right? So the, the advertiser is, gonna, is, is the one supporting, the advertiser are the one supporting the whole ecosystem, right? So part of what the advertiser are paying uh, for uh, the ads should go into the uh, maintenance of the whole infrastructure of the system, right? So just think that online advertising is, is a business in the order of hundreds of billions of dollars right now that grows at the rate of 20% every year. Um, uh, TB is coming into the uh, ecosystem. Uh, out of home advertising is coming into the ecosystem. So it's, it's really huge, huge business. And there is enough, um, uh, enough uh, margins in, in the business to support all the infrastructure uh, needed to support our solution. And I'm not a blockchain expert, but I un understand that we can also batch transactions. So, to, yeah, to lower the gas fees, we're not doing it per transaction. We can batch them together. Uh, well, I think they're paying. Essentially, they're paying for an audience for their for their content yeah. for their ad. Uh, but, but it's a good question because it's, it's probably one of the unknowns as we go forward is where the value comes from and where the, uh, the, the expenses are paid. Sure. And our, our mentality is that people are our partners and, and brands are our customers. And we're essentially going to market with your product. So you're not, you, you have a product that we're, we're, we're a broker for you. Um, I think in terms of incentives for doing it, it's, you know, when I think about it, I think about the uncluttering. I think about both for individuals and brands, we have so many inboxes nowadays. And all the social media channels, a regular inbox. And a lot of that content we didn't ask for or it's in a way that um, it's too much, but we can't, all we can do is unsubscribe. So for me, uncluttering is a huge, huge part of that. Um, you know, we start out as a straight privacy company, but privacy is not very sexy. People don't do things until they've gotten burned by a dandy theft or something, they're not gonna be proactive. So we have to find more consumer ways. But the idea that uh, the interactions with brands that I have in the future, the ads that I get are so personalized to me that I'm having to spend less time on things. And brands have, have to spend less money on me because I always use the example, if, if Lego knew that all I care about is the Star Wars sets and that's all they advertise for me, they're gonna make more money off of me than they do now. And I don't have the three emails a week I get from Lego that don't interest me. Uh, so I think it's just the, the efficiency of life and, and that uncluttering. But also, everything in Profila is private. Um, when, when you're sharing feedback with a company, it's not on TripAdvisor where you're trying to publicly perform and they can get into, you know, flame wars and such. There's a space for private, and so much of, of life now is this public performance. Um, and, and a lot of our marketing is based on these, this individual PR campaigns that we're all running on our social media, but that's not necessarily our authentic self, but that's what it's being marketed to. Uh, and the idea of, of actually saying, well, I'm gonna take these, these 10 brands that I love the most, 
and just interact with them on Profila and get much more authentic um, uh, deals and offers, exclusive content, that, that kind of loyalty stuff, using less time. So really, it's a, it's a time saving for both. It, you know, for brands, it's saving money, saving time. For individuals, it's saving time and getting closer to what I want. The idea that I can you know, get a two-week trip to Bali without having spent any time whatsoever because I've already done all the process of, of doing the self-discovery surveys. And in our alpha trials, we learned people love filling in surveys. People love answering questions about themselves. Um, and most of the time, you're answering 10 questions about uh, whatever, and it tells you what Harry Potter house you're going to live in. And then somebody else has that data. In this case, every question you answer is yours. And it's part of your vault. It's part of your insights about yourself, and you can share those. And I think that sense of control, we always talk about sovereignty and agency, which really is lacking on the internet. And it really ha is how sh things should have been. Um, yeah, I, was explaining, I, I was explaining this to my mother, and she said at the end of my explanation, why isn't it like this now? And, and I had no answer besides just inertia, that the internet was born and had very, a lot of idealism, and it just kind of slowly became this factory of, like you said, that we're all products to be sold. And we're trying to create a different paradigm that sees people with much more agency over their data. And also, I, I should have mentioned this in my talk, there's nothing that anybody can do to really go against the current paradigm. It's too powerful, it's too profitable. What we can do is say, we're gonna create this data source that's so much better than any of the crap you can find about me online, pardon my language, um, that why would a brand pay somebody else for bad data about me when they can just pay me for the best data evergreen? Because I'm gonna be continuously updating things um, essentially, it's a great front of a CRM in terms of my contact information, but also people's tra travel preferences change over time. And a brand that subscribes to my profile is getting those updates as they go. That's just smarter. So hopefully that answer your question. It, so, it could be, but those insights will be presented to you and asked, do you want to add these to your profile? And you can also just take that further. Um, and again, this is not part of our immediate roadmap at all, but the idea, imagine in a browser with no tracking, that every week it said, hey, based on what you've done, here are the five things we think we've learned about you. Would you like to add them to your profile? And you can actually pick and choose. Because maybe you're, maybe you're doing the search for a, for a Bali vacation. Oh, do you want to turn this into a buying signal and have that not be tracked? Because we, we track because that's the business model, but it doesn't have to be the business model. It's just the one we're all used to. And it seems like it's too big to change, but that's why it's create something different than better. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And have a great conference.